The topic for discussion is aging and the periodontium. Why should we learn about the age changes that are occurring in the periodontal tissues? Because of the increased health awareness and the improvements that are taking place in the preventive dentistry, there is decreased tooth loss in all the age groups. So because of the increased health awareness, there is increased life expectancy. Do you think that the increased life expectancy is a good change? Yes, it's a good change. But because of the increased life expectancy, there are the greater health expectations from the older individuals. There are greater demands from the older individuals, which are different from that seen in the younger age groups. So in order to meet these demands, we need to know what are the changes that are occurring in the periodontal tissues in aged individuals. So the periodontal tissues are programmed to provide the healthy support for the dentition throughout the life. So although there are some concerns that because of age, the, there is increased susceptibility to periodontal disease, actually the role of aging in disease progression is minimal. But let's see what are the changes that take place in the aged individuals in case of periodontal tissues. The first one is about the gingival epithelium. In the gingival epithelium, there is thinning and decreased keratinization of the gingival epithelium. If I say decreased keratinization, it automatically means that there is increase in the permeability to bacterial antigens and decreased resistance to the functional trauma or decreased resistance to the bacteria also. Some state that there are no age-related changes in the gingival epithelium, just like controversy exists everywhere. Some state that there are no changes in the gingival epithelium, while some state that there are changes which include the flattening of the retipex and altered cell density. Now, uh, there is some a controversy that with aging, there is gingival recession, whereas some state that there is no gingival recession with aging. So, in order to understand this, you need to know when the gingival recession occurs, when the gingival recession does not occur. This diagram explains the relationship of the gingival margin with the crown and the root surface. In the A picture, there is normal relationship with the gingival margin. It is 1 to 2 mm above the cement to enamel junction. Whereas in the B picture, you can see that there is a wear of the incisal edge and the tooth is trying to continuously erupt in order to maintain the occlusal contact. In this process, the tooth is moving but the gingiva is at the same position. So clinically, we can appreciate the gingival recession in this case. Whereas in the C picture, you can see that there is incisal wear. The tooth is trying to continuously erupt but along with the tooth, the dentogingival complex is also moving. The tooth when it is erupting is taking the dentogingival complex along with it. Therefore, there is no gingival recession and the width of attached gingiva is increasing in this case. This process that is occurring in the C picture is called as passive eruption. So, the migration of the junctional epithelium to the root surface is caused by the tooth erupting through the gingiva. So, this tooth is erupting in order to maintain the occlusal contact with the opposing tooth. So, this is the passive eruption. Whereas in the D picture, you can see that there is no incisal wear and only the gingiva is migrating apically wherein we can see the gingival recession again. Next, we will see about the changes in the gingival connective tissue. The gingival connective tissue with the increasing age becomes coarser and denser and there will be increased rate of conversion of soluble to insoluble collagen. So whatever collagen is present, it gets converted into insoluble collagen. There will be macromolecular conformations that are seen in the collagen structure. So there are qualitative and quantitative changes in the collagen because of which whatever the soluble collagen is present, it will get converted to insoluble collagen. That's why we will see greater collagen with aging. And there will also be increased mechanical strength. There will be increased denaturing temperature. All these will indicate the stabilization of the collagen. That is because of the changes in the macromolecular conformation of collagen. Therefore, there is greater collagen content in the aged tissues. Now, we will see the changes that take place in the periodontal ligament. With aging, there will be decreased numbers of fibroblasts and also a more irregular structure is seen. And there will be decreased organic matrix, decreased amount of epithelial cell rest, but there is increased amount of elastic fiber content. Remember this, okay? In the connective tissue, we have seen that there is increased collagen fiber content because of the conversion of soluble to insoluble collagen, whereas in the periodontal ligament, you see the increased amount of elastic fibers. Another controversial point here is it was stated that 
uh, there will be changes in the width of the periodontal ligament with aging uh, but this is actually not true the width of the periodontal ligament depends on the functional status of the tooth this we have already seen in case of hyperfunction there will be decreased width of the periodontal ligament whereas in case of hyperfunction there will be increased width of the periodontal ligament so because of the functional status of the tooth the width will alter but usually if suppose the tooth is unopposed the tooth is not having any antagonist then obviously the tooth will be in hyperfunction there will be decreased width of the periodontal ligament so if there is tooth loss in this aged population okay so then that case is we will be seeing the hyperfunction and that's why we will be seeing the decreased width of the periodontal ligament so there is variability among the population in case of population with tooth loss since there is no antagonist we might see the decreased width of the periodontal ligament but it is not that all aged individuals will have a decreased width of the periodontal ligament always remember that the width of the periodontal ligament depends on the functional status of the tooth whether it is in hyperfunction or hyperfunction or it is normally functioning another important point is that the periodontal ligament repair capacity is decreased with aging that is there is decreased cell proliferation and therefore the impairment of the repair potential is seen in the periodontal ligament however these changes are not uh, manifested clinically right next we will see the changes in the cementum so uh, there will be increased cemental width this finding is actually uh, not of surprise because of the continuous tooth eruption there will be deposition of the cementum so this deposition is greater in the apical region and in the lingual regions right so this increase will be almost 5 to 10 times with the increasing age and there will be increased surface irregularity on the cementum because of the accumulation of the resorption base next in the alveolar bone we see that there is more irregular periodontal surface of the alveolar bone and the collagen fiber insertion is also irregular and it was stated that the bone graft preparations from the older donors has lesser osteogenic potential when compared to the bone graft preparations taken from the younger donors next we will be seeing the changes in the bacterial plaque it was stated that the dentogingival plaque accumulation increases with age this is because of the increase in the hard tissue surface because of the gingival recession so because of the continuous tooth eruption because of the presence of uh, gingival recession there is increase in the tooth surface area so because of which there will be increase in the plaque accumulation as the surface is increasing there will be uh, more amount of plaque accumulation and some studies stated that there is increased amount of p gingivalis aa comitans some other organisms like treponema denticola and privatella intermedia this shift in the microbial flora is not truly attributed to aging it is because of the population that is considered in the study does not have a very good income and it also did not have any recent dental care so this might have influenced the shift in the microbial flora so we cannot really attribute this microbial flora that is the increase in the p gingivalis a comitans uh, truly to aging changes next we will be learning about the immune and inflammatory responses the study of the effects of aging on immune response is called as immunosenescence so it was stated that there is no alteration in the host response with aging but there are some differences noted in the t and b cells cytokines and the natural killer cells but there is no difference in the polymorphonuclear neutrophils and the macrophages another important point here is about the nutrition nutrition has the capacity to modify the immune and the inflammatory responses therefore uh, there has been a lot of uh, research taken place in this case of uh, in this particular point that is in nutrition why why are we talking about the nutrition in this uh, aged individuals there are a lot of changes in the nutritional intake in the aged individuals because of this impact this nutrition forms a potential risk factor for the periodontal diseases and their progression since it's a modulator of the immune and inflammatory response the nutrition plays a very important role in case of periodontal disease now we will learn about the functional categories of older adults if we know into what functional category an adult patient belongs then we will be able to better frame a treatment plan that will solve both his physical issues as well as psychological issues the first category is functionally independent in these the older adults reside in a community and they almost need very little assistance or no assistance from others 
okay they will be able to do their daily activities whereas in the second category that is the frail in these the older adults reside in a community but they only have some degree of independence but they need assistance from others in case of activities of daily living like bathing dressing and transportation whereas the third category is the functionally dependent category wherein in these the older adults are institutionalized and they do not maintain any degree of independence they will be depending on others for activities of daily living like bathing dressing and transportation next we will learn about the dental patient interview for an older adult initially you will be taking the dental history for the patient this includes the dates of the last dental examination and visit if any radiographs were taken in the past if the patient underwent any endodontic therapy prosthetic appliances or any periodontal therapy in the past so this dental history review will help us analyze the patient's preferences and values towards the dental treatment and what are his desires from the dental treatment next we will be reviewing the medical history of the patient in which we will take the careful review of the past and current medical and mental conditions remember the medical history of the older patient should be detailed and it is time taking in case of severely compromised older adults but if the time spent is proper you will be able to know if you need any other specialist involvement in treating this older adult patient that means you will be knowing if there is any interdisciplinary treatment that is required in treating this particular older adult you will review all the systemic diseases and disorders that the patient is suffering from if the patient has any bleeding disorders or is under the use of anticoagulants if the patient has certain cardiovascular conditions or if the patient is having diabetes so all these should be taken in a detailed and a thorough manner next we should assess the behavior history of the patient we should assess whether the patient is over dependent we should assess whether the patient is compliant or non compliant some patients will be non compliant in maintaining their oral self care regime but they will expect a lot from the dentist their expectations are almost unrealistic so you need to assess this behavior history of the patient next you need to assess the social history of the patient especially in case of frail and dependent older adults they will be dependent on others for their assistance so you need to assess if the patient is having any support system or not from the others next we will learn how to perform a dental examination for an older adult patient you need to assess the oral epithelium of the patient you need to assess if there is any thin waxy appearance of the tissue if there is any hyperkeratosis on the tongue you need to assess for defoliation of the papillae any alteration in the taste if the patient has geographic tongue or oral infection such as candidiasis you need to assess for xerostomia the signs that the patient is having xerostomia are intraoral dryness burning sensation kelosis alterations in the taste next you need to assess for pronounced inflammatory responses of the gingiva in cases of infection remember that advanced stage does not decrease the plaque control however the older adults may have the difficulty performing the adequate oral hygiene because of the compromised health altered mental status medications or altered dexterity so because of this lack of dexterity the patient may not be able to perform the self care regime properly in such cases uh, we have the newer lightweight electric power toothbrushes which may be more beneficial than manual toothbrush for older adults especially with those who are having the physical and sensory limitations so in this way we can improve the way the patient is performing the self care regime so we can give the patient the chemotherapeutic agents especially the anti plaque agents which include the chlorhexidine so this chlorhexidine helps in preventing the plaque development whereas we can also give the patient topical fluoride application this topical fluoride application is bactericidal to dental plaque and it also reduces the enamel solubility in cases of older adults suffering from xerostomia we can advise them salivary substitutes also so here we come to conclusion because of the increased health expectancy from the older adults we need to know how the older adults are different from the other population and we need to know what are the changes that are occurring in the older adults so accordingly we will be able to frame the treatment plan we need to know whether the patient is frail or functionally dependent or independent whether the patient is having any support system or not whether the patient is compliant or not so dentist should be comfortable in providing the comprehensive dental care for this segment of population especially so if we need if we are to be comfortable we need to know about the changes that occur in the older population 
The important questions from this topic include the age changes in the periodontium both from the theoretical as well as from the viva point of view. You need to be thorough with the age changes in the gingival epithelium, connective tissue, periodontal ligament, alveolar bone and the immune and inflammatory responses separately. Thank you everyone for your patient listening and all the best.